Creating a black and white photo with Luminar couldn't be easier and taking it to the next level and really crafting a black and white masterpiece couldn't be simpler either. So in this video, let's take a look at the tools available to us to realize our black and white creative vision. So we're gonna look at two examples here and the first one is gonna be a landscape and the second one a portrait. And the tool set that I share with you here can be applied equally to any genre of photography. So let's make a start. We can do a lot within the Essentials tab. The first thing we're going to do is convert our image to black and white. Let's come up to black and white conversion and click convert to black and white. Simple. But right here we are far from done. All we've really done is just desaturate the image. We've just taken the color away. Currently, we're a long way for an impactful and artistic black and white image. So let's see what else we can do. Let's try a bit of AI enhance. It's always a good idea to try throwing in some AI accent and just see what that does for your image. If we push it to 100, it's certainly adding interest to our image, but it's a little bit too much in this case. So let's bring that right back to around 25. And because we're dealing with black and white, it's all about the interplay between the whites, the blacks, the gray tones. We really want to create an interesting contrast here. So if we dive into the AI structure, that will certainly help us with that. Again, if I push it all the way to 100, we can see exactly what it's doing. Again, too much. But if we bring bring that back and just tickle a little bit of that in at sort of plus 18, that's fantastic. Within the light section of the Essentials tab, we have access to Smart Contrast. It's a really great slider to play with, especially in black and white. So let's start having a little go with that and see what happens. As we drag that to the right, we see so much more drama going on where the sunlight is hitting the ridges of this hill and we've got the pathway leading up. If we double click to reset it, we can see our before and then click on 100 to see our after and that's making a really marked improvement. I really like that. Now one thing that's starting to happen though is that our sky with the addition of contrast, the dark foreground is getting darker and the light and bright highlights of the sky is getting even brighter. So we're getting very much of a dichotomy of an image. We're getting a dark bottom half of the image and a very bright top half. Now one way that we can address this is by actually coming into the black and white conversion tool and you can see that we have access to different color channels underneath. As we know, the sky is going to be mainly sitting in that cyan and blue range. So what we can do is actually bring these sliders down and there you can see as I bring the blue down, we have the most notable impact. We're really darkening the blues of the sky there. So that's helping to control the brightness level in the sky. If we want to take that control further, what we can do is actually come into the Pro tab here and we've got access to the Adjustable Gradient tool. We've got Top selected currently, so if we bring the exposure down on the top, that is going to bring the exposure of the top half of the image down. So. Let's do that quite aggressively and let's put that around minus 78. Now we're starting to have a really interesting and moody kind of black and white. There's one last thing that I'd like to do in the Essentials tab and that is deal with the vignette. So black and white images tend to lend themselves very well to a vignette which is just the darkening of the edges. So if I grab this and bring this all the way down, you can see exactly what it's doing. If we bring the size in even further, we're going to draw the viewer's attention right to the center of the frame and this interesting path leading through here. I feel that this is just a little bit too much, but by bringing the amount slider down to minus 100, we can actually see exactly what's going on with our size slider here. So now let's just bring the amount back to somewhere that we feel happy with. Let's go for something around minus 62. Now we've made all of these changes, I'm feeling like I'm really liking this image, but as we've darkened the sky, I feel like our white point is not quite as bright and white as I might like. So the last thing I'm going to look at is the curve tool, and this is really, really powerful. It's great for color images, but it's also fantastically powerful for black and whites. So to access it, come to the light tab here, and if you don't see your curve, press the advanced settings and that's going to open up the curve tool here. The bottom left hand side of the curve that talks to the shadows in the image. The top right talks to the highlights and the central area of the curve talks to the midtones. And by putting 
little markers onto the tone curve itself. We can brighten up the image, we can darken the image, or what we can do is a bit of a combination by playing with the shadows. So I might leave the shadows where they are, but just brighten up these highlights just a little bit, and that's gonna brighten the highlights through the whole image. There, I really like that. And I am gonna say that is our landscape edit done. So let's look at our before and after. Here's our before and here's our after. And I think you'll agree that's a really nice, strong black and white conversion, before and after. And if we compare that to our original conversion where we literally just clicked convert to black and white, that is this image here. And you can see that it really lacks the impact of what we've just created here. So this is with a simple black and white conversion only, and this is what we were able to achieve playing around with the sliders within Luminar 4. And I think you'll agree this is a much more impactful black and white with much more drama. Let's move on to creating a black and white masterpiece from a portrait. Here's the portrait that we're going to work with, and we're gonna see what we can create converting this to a lovely black and white. So first of all, let's come over to our black and white conversion and click convert to black and white. As with our landscape image, all it's done is just desaturate the photo. It's just ripped the color right out. So we wanna really kinda of do a little bit more with this image. So using the color channels listed below, we're gonna move the sliders and just see if we can improve the black and white image right from the start. If I move the red, we're talking into the skin tones. It's not helping a whole heap, but we'll just push those up slightly. If we grab the yellows and move those, that's just helping to add to that little shimmer of light on the left-hand side of the model's face. Now let's look at the greens. Now, depending what we want to do, moving the green slider may help us. If we want to darken down the sort of sides of the image, we can move the green slider to the left, or if we want to brighten the edge of the image, we can move it to the right. And in this case, I think what we're gonna do is actually try and brighten the edge of the image to draw our attention towards our model. The other channels aren't really going to do too much, but the blue may just help with the eyes. If I slide this from the right to the left, you can see that her eyes are definitely changing. We've got a very dark, a uh, lifeless kind of look if we go to the left, but if we go to the right, we've got a very piercing look to her eyes. And I think what we'll do is just ease in a little bit of that and stick around the sort of 46 mark. Now we've converted our image to black and white, let's have a play around with some Illuminar's tools and sliders to see what effect we can produce. Let's jump into the light panel and get hold of the smart contrast and play with that. I really like playing with the smart contrast slider within the black and white. I really think it helps to add drama to your image. If your highlights are getting blown out, you have the option to just bring those back slightly. And by taking that to the left, it's just controlling the highlight on the hair ever so slightly. If you want a little bit more interest in the shadows, you can boost those up. Being able to control where the white point and the black point fall in your image is really important for a black and white conversion. Now I've made these adjustments, I'm going to play with the curve and see if I can improve the image. By grabbing this middle point and moving it up, we're starting to create a more dreamy kind of feel. It's brightening the image and I really like that. Let's bring that to about there and say we're good with that. Now, unlike the landscape where we darkened the edges with the vignette, I'm actually gonna use the vignette tool in the opposite direction this time. So let's open that up and we're gonna brighten the edges. So as you saw last time, if I take the amount to the left, it darkens down those edges. But on this occasion, because we were shooting through leaves that were reflecting the sunlight, it was creating almost the opposite of a vignette. It was brightening these edges. So let's do that. Let's actually bring this amount slider up and we can see that we're introducing white around the edges of the image, which is helping to draw our attention to our model. Here we can use the size slider again. And as we bring that in, it's tightening in around the model. Obviously, I don't want to bleach things out to the extent they have done here with pure white in the corners. So we're just going to ease that amount slider back. Somewhere around 64 looks good to me. Now in the landscape black and white conversion, we didn't really look at the creative tab. So let's dive in there now and see what we can do with this portrait. I think many of these tools would have something to offer us in this black and white conversion. So let's look at a few of them. Let's look at dramatic first, grab the amount slider, and as we push that all the way to 100, you can see exactly what that's doing. Let's turn that off, 
and on and it is doing what it says on the tin it's adding drama so let's just ease in a little bit of that let's open the matte look and have a look at what that does as we move the slider to the right that's washing out the blacks and that's been quite a popular look on instagram for quite a while now so if that's something you want to play with go ahead i'm actually just going to ease in just a little bit of that because this image was shot in a forest with the sunlight coming through, I feel like it's got a really nice dreamy quality to it anyway. But let's see if we can enhance that further using Luminar's tools. Let's open up Mystical, bring that to the right, and you can see that that's creating a very kind of dreamlike quality to this image. I feel at 100 it is way too strong, but I would like to add a little bit of it, just like I did with Drama and Matte Look. I'm just going to add in a small amount of that look. And just to finish things off, let's see if we can add a little bit of glow just to enhance that dreamy quality even further. If we push that all the way, it's far too much. But I encourage you to do that just so that you get a feel for exactly what the tool is doing. 100, far too much, but maybe we just need to ease in maybe six, maybe not even that. Let's go for five. So if we turn that off and on, it's just adding a little something. When I think of black and white photos, I think of the old masters that were shooting on film. And if we want to emulate that film grain look, we can certainly do that through Luminar. So let's get to the film grain drop down and let's grab the amount and start playing with that and zoom in to see exactly what that's doing. Let's turn it off and on. And when we come in close, we can see that we can push this just a little further. We could even go that far. That looks quite nice. Maybe just ease it off a little bit. Yep, I'm happy with that. Off and on. It's just enough to give us that characteristic hint of film. Let's zoom back out. I'm happy with that. And if we look at our before and our after, I think we've created a really nice, subtle black and white conversion. As a final touch, we may want to crop the image. So we come to the crop tool. Let's do a free crop, which means we can move the handles anywhere we like. And let's bring our attention right in on our model because I feel down in the bottom half, not too much is going on. So let's click done there, the crops applied, and now we have a finished image. I've been quite heavy handed with this particular edit and the landscape as well, but I really wanted you to get a sense of how the tools can be used. And sometimes it's easier to see that when things are pushed a little further than they normally might be. But overall, I think you'll agree that from this to this, I think we've made a really nice black and white conversion. As you can see, creating a powerful and impactful black and white isn't as simple as just clicking convert to black and white. There's a lot more to it than that, but the tools in Luminar 4 really enable us to create some fantastic results. I really encourage you to enjoy just playing around with the sliders, with the tools, and see where your creative vision takes you. Thanks for watching guys, I'll catch you in the next video.